historic St. Mary City. It's a beautiful place to go to become a part of history in all of Maryland, to really get involved in it. It's hands-on, it's beautiful, but there is a way that you can make historic St. Mary City a part of your contemporary life. With us today is Dr. Regina Fodden. It's good to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now you're the executive director of Historic St. Mary City. Yes. So you really see the big picture. I do. Thank you. Okay. Now one of the things that we talked about was people becoming involved with Historic St. Mary City on an everyday, every week, monthly basis. That's kind of your your department. Yes. Let's talk about that. Well, some people choose to be members, and that okay. means that you buy a membership, you can come in as an individual or a couple of family, and then you can uh, come to the museum anytime you want. You've already paid your due, so you can come anytime you want for free. You can get a discount in our shop. Uh, you can take part in programs that may be at a discounted level. You certainly hear about our uh, membership events and you get invitations to things and so we pay uh, special attention to our members of course we're, we're happy to see anybody come but our members provide us also with support we are a state institu uh, state supported institution mm -hmm. but membership helps us really carry on our programs we have over 800 acres here and we have 100 buildings and so it's a big place so we appreciate that our members like I said not only um, supporting us financially but also mm -hmm. participating here because that's what we're here for we're for here for the people who want to enjoy history come here plant mm -hmm. a seed or you know wade in the water or go on the ship or whatever they want to do and then also when people come here sometimes and they live in the area and they, or they sometimes come from a way as, as far away as Pennsylvania they say I love this place I want to be part of it in a, in a deeper way than maybe a membership offers and so they become volunteers so we have people who work on the Dove, uh, our, the Maryland Dove, our ship, and they come down and they might work an hour or two or three a week if they want to do that. Then they get a chance to sail. They learn about sailing with people mm -hmm. who've been in um, maritime field for 30 years. Uh, we have people who work in our gardens. We have beautiful gardens right on the St. Mary's River, and it's always more fun to garden in somebody else's space yes, than your is. own. <laughs> right, right. And then um, you can also, I said, uh, be part of our programs. We have things like Beer Fest, which might be a little different from an educational program. We also have programs for people of all ages. So we have a program that we've been running for a number of years called the Terra Maria. And that is for young people, uh, usually about junior high age. And they can come here. They work at the plantation, which is really our most immersive site, where you are at a 17th century reproduction plantation. They wear the costumes. They learn about the history. And they interpret to the public. And, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them. But it's also wonderful to represent a really sort of working plantation where the visitors come in. They see children out there. And they, they take on the English accent. They'll tell you about the garden. They explain what the plants are for. They can you know take care of the chickens and the pigs and help uh, that way. So they get involved. And actually, our first Terra Maria is now working here full time at the Indian Hamlet. And so it's become a way of life for him. And, and I really think about it as a life's work. And so whether you're retired or whether you're still in school, it's that thing that you want to do that you want to spend time on. And that's the volunteership gives people an opportunity to really contribute. And that's certainly something we see in this community, a, an understanding of giving back, of participating, and, and making a difference, not just to historic St. Mary's City in your own life, but then also the fun part is, for anybody who's done this before, is when someone comes on site and says, oh, I get it, and oh, I get to plant the seed and I get to participate here. And so that's really been very meaningful uh, for the volunteers who come here, but as well for the staff to see the support from the community to enable other people to enjoy what we do every day. That's wonderful. And as we've walked around the grounds and we've talked to different volunteers and interpreters and people that work in all different facets, as you've mentioned, it was interesting to me to hear the number of people that have been here for years. Yes. So I think it's, it speaks to itself that you get involved and you love it and it just grows and you can be a part of it for many years. I've only been here for four years and I'm a very short time person here. <laughs> I mean, 40 years, 50 years sometimes, people have been in the community and watched the museum grow. It only started in the 1960s. We do represent the 17th century, but there are people in the community who watch when it was an archaeology park right. and then have watched the buildings and the reconstructions rise out of the ground and are really very invested in this place and love it and, and have a great ownership over it. You know, the, the word museum connotates history and to me something that is very still and it, it, it's a reflection. But it, in historic St. Mary City, it's alive and there is something new and something fresh, some new discoveries, new artifacts, new programs 
every year. Right, and anybody who loves history knows that. There's always something new to learn, some new idea that mm -hmm. comes along, or for us, literally, that's something that comes out of the ground. And so we always have a dig, or at least the last three years, we've had a dig going on every day, whether it's about a capital project or whether it's our field school, which is the longest running field school in the country. And so you can come down and see college students from all over the country and sometimes around the world digging up, uh, excavating and, and um, finding things from the 17th century, 18th century, 19th century, mm -hmm. because historic St. Mary's City didn't stop in the 17th century, although that's really our core story. Mm -hmm. Of course, people have been on the landscape for all that time, and certainly, you know, many, many years before that, we, we talk about the Piscataway Indians as well mm -hmm. and the Yakomako, the who were the local people right here. And so our story really, you know, goes across thousands of years. It does. It's not a, a span of decades or hundreds of years. It's thousands mm -hmm. of years. Well, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you. And really, the whole point is to get involved. You can become a member if that's, if that's what you want to do, or you can become a volunteer and a part of this living history that we have here in St. Mary's County. Dr. Fodden, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Right. Historic St. Mary's City. Join, become a part, become involved.